Creepy Cupcakes. Today I'm showing you the makeup for the other mother from Coraline. Let's get into it. We're going to start off by making the buttons. I bought these black moldable plastic pellets from Amazon, which are perfect for the buttons. What I did is I put a little bit of the pellets into a cup with some water. I heated that up for like a minute and then it gets moldable. Let that cool for a little bit and then it's ready to be played with. I just made a little bit of a ball, pushed it in between my hands and I'm dipping a toothpick into some Vaseline and I'm puncturing holes through the button. I found that this makes it so smooth and you don't have to fudge with any of the plastic kind of pulling or anything like that because the Vaseline just makes it so silky smooth. And then you should have your perfect buttons. Next, I'm taking some plastiline clay and I'm just putting like a little ball of it into the eye socket. I'm gonna be taking a fork and scraping it off to level the eye socket out. That way, the mask will bulge away from my face a little bit, but the button will sit right on top and it'll look flat, but it'll be a little bit away from my eyes so that I have the ability to see it side to side. We're gonna make a liquid latex paste. Using some liquid latex, I'm pouring some into a cup, a little bit like half a cup, pouring some flour on top. I don't really measure this out, I just kinda eyeball it, and then I just stir it until it gets to a little bit like a cookie dough consistency. I like it a little bit more on the liquidy side than on the doughy side, because when it gets more doughy, you don't get as much workable time with it, so if you keep it a little bit thinner, you'll be able to have a lot more working time with it. I'm applying the liquid latex paste right onto my plaster cast that I made. If you don't have one of these, you should definitely get one or make one because it is so helpful. I'm applying the paste only on the top half of the face because I am going to be doing the bottom half all in a wax because I wanted to be able to move my mouth a little bit, but funny enough, I really wasn't able to anyways. To smooth out the surface of the mask, I'm dipping my finger into liquid latex and I'm just pushing into the liquid latex paste to make it nice and smooth. Make sure that you, whenever you dip it into liquid latex, really saturate your finger or whatever tool that you're using because the more liquid latex you have on it, honestly, the better so that you can really smooth out that liquid latex. Grab your buttons and size them into your mask to make sure that they're going to fit properly before it dries because once it dries, there's no going back. To make the cracking in her skin, I'm using a toothpick and I'm dipping that into some liquid latex and dragging it into the liquid latex. If your liquid latex has already started to dry on the top, you can still use your toothpick and scrape it across. It'll drag a little bit, but you just have to kind of scrape it and push down at the same time to get it to kind of fold into itself. Once it dries for a little bit and kind of gets like a little bit of a skin across it, you can actually push down into the latex and form it even more kind of like almost like a moldable clay. Once you have your mask the way you want it, I like to let mine air dry, so I let mine air dry for two or three days. All right, so your mask should look something like this, and we are going to powder the heck out of it. You want to like coat the whole thing in powder if you're gonna be using cream paints on top of this. I have found powdering it a lot helps the cream paint to have something to stick to. And you're gonna need the powder as well to peel up the sides of the mask. You're gonna start peeling the liquid latex off of the face cast just around the parameter of the face first, little bit by little bit, powdering every single step of the way to keep it from sticking to itself. If you go around the face, this is going to keep it from, to keep the mask from sticking to itself or just like getting all messed up. This is the best way to peel off the mask without jeopardizing the integrity of the mask. Once you have the mask peeled up, you wanna powder the inside of the mask generously because this is going to be very comfortable for your face as well when you apply it. And then any clay pieces that are stuck on the inside of the mask, you're just gonna to wanna to try to 
flip it inside out and pop out that clay. Next, we're gonna trim the mask and I'm sorry, I'm kind of out of frame in this one, but all I'm doing is just taking some scissors and I'm just trimming along the edges of the mask to get it to a very smooth edge. It's gonna make it easier to blend out. I popped the buttons out of the mask and I'm cutting out the inside of the eye hole, leaving just a little bit of an edge so that I can super glue the buttons back in. But there was quite a bit of liquid latex buildup that needed to be cut off. For the cracking, I'm just going in with some black body paint and filling it in with a tiny little bristle brush. Next, I'm going in with Mayron's white cream paint stick and I'm using a flat panel brush to apply the white cream paint. This is the best way that I have found to get that really nice solid white base on a prosthetic piece. You could go in and color correct it beforehand, but honestly the white, I did like two layers and it was perfectly white so I didn't need to go in and color correct. Once you have your base, let it dry a little bit, set it with some white powder, and now it's time for the makeup. With white body paint, I'm just setting kind of a boundary of where that body paint is going to go. I do extend it just a little bit further in case the dress were to move side to side. But for this, I really wanted to kind of have like a costume for the future if I wanted to wear this out. So I did get a dress, but you can paint it on if you want. I'm painting out the skeletal figure of the other mother. I looked up a couple different pictures from Coraline to try to get a good idea of this one. Ultimately, I kind of just did whatever I really wanted on this, no lie. I'm going in with black body paint and I'm just going to carve out that skeletal figure that I painted out in white body paint. With black body paint and a small little bristle brush, I'm going in and adding some cracking throughout the skeletal body and trying to get it similar to the reference, but also just kind of adding it how I please. I'm going in with some black eyeshadow just to add some shading around the bones. I'm trying to be very mindful about where the light would be hitting the bones, but also this is a kind of cartoon, so you can kind of have a little bit more free roam with this one. Once I got the dress on, I knew I needed to paint the bone on each of the arms, so that's what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna quickly paint out this bone and then paint black around it to camouflage it in. I already did the other side, so I'm just doing this side real quick. And don't forget to pop on some shading onto the bones as well. And then I went ahead and painted my hand later on at the end of the video just to add a little bit more pizzazz to the character. And make sure to add the cracking as well and then go in and add a little bit of shading to the cracking. And you should be all set with your little arm bone now. My favorite time! Let's apply this baby! I'm using Prose to apply the prosthetic. I'm putting a little bit on my nose with a cotton swab and then working out onto the high cheekbones of my face and my forehead. Because this is my own prosthetic, this is how I apply my prosthetics. Whenever you're applying a professional prosthetic, this is not the way that you apply them. You would normally just apply it to the nose first and then you would work the glue and the prosthetic outward piece by piece. But I'm only wearing this prosthetic piece for like 20, 30 minutes, so it's not a big deal. Here, I'm just applying it to the nose first. This way I can get it nice and centered with my eyes and my forehead. And then I'm working it outwards trying to pat it outwards and get it nice and stuck to the parameter of my face. I'm taking some more Prosade around the parameter of the mask, making sure that it's all nice and secure. With black body paint, I'm just carving out where the cheekbones are going to end. She's got high cheekbones and the rest is in shadow. Next, I'm gonna be working with some wax. At first, you need to lay down a little bit of Prosade so that you have a sticky base to stick the wax to. Here I am melting the wax in between my fingers. You do need to soften this product before you can apply it. Once I have it nice and softened, I do pack it right on top of that Prosade. If the Prosade is not sticky, then don't go ahead and take the wax back off, apply more Prosade, let it get tacky, and then apply the wax. This is kind of an ongoing game with working with wax and Prosade. Sometimes you're just not as fast as you hope to be, and that's okay. Wax can definitely be a bit tricky of a product to use, so don't give up. 
I wanted to do it this way so that I had the ability to maybe talk with it on or move my mouth instead of doing like just a full face mask. But I kind of wish I would have just made a full face mask at this point because I really wasn't able to talk in this anyways. But it did look really cool and I also enjoy playing with wax. As much as it can be tricky, it is a pretty fun product to play with. To smooth out the wax, I do use Vaseline. I use the back of my finger to get like my fingernail to smooth it out. Or I'll go in with some of my spatula like knife set that I have and I'll use that to blend out the edges and get everything nice and smooth. I also use the end of the spatula to carve into the wax and make the cracking. So you can see that here is I'm dipping it right into the Vaseline so that I can apply it right to my face and this really makes the process that much easier. Once you have your wax in place, I go in with Prosaid. You can also use liquid latex or some other type of fixing set medium and you're just going to kind of set the wax this makes it so that you can actually add foundation or paints or powders or anything like that right on top of this. If you don't do this process, you cannot get any type of paint on top of this wax. Like, good luck to you, but I have never been able to add anything on top of the wax unless I set it this type of way. After the Prosade, you do need to go in and set it with powder. I'm using the Mayron Color Set Powder just to completely set all of this. Once you do this, this is perfect, locks it in, and then you can paint on top of it. That's exactly what I'm doing here. Taking a little bristle brush with some black body paint, and I'm applying that black body paint right into the cracks that I made using that little spatula knife. I'm going in with black body paint just to completely fill in the cheekbone area. To make that wax a little bit more brighter, I'm going back in with some Mayron white cream paint from their white cream stick. I really love this product. I never really thought that I would like cream paints as much as I do, but these cream sticks are incredible. I'm using this little palette brush just to go ahead and apply that right on top of the wax. I do have to say that sometimes the wax sometimes still moves. This is a cream paint that I'm applying right on top of a waxy base, even though you kind of covered it up a little bit, it'll still move around just a touch. So as I'm applying this, I'm trying not to go back over the same area multiple times because the more times you go over it, the more times you're warming up that what the liquid latex or the prosade whatever you put on it and the wax so the wax will kind of start moving a little bit and warm up so just kind of a heads up on that don't forget to fill in the lips so we're gonna give this beautiful broad right hair a black set of lips for the point on the head, I made this little cone shape with foil, and then I'm applying that little piece up into my hairnet, and I'm trying to keep that, like, I put that almost to the very center of my head, because once the wig goes on, it kind of pushed it further back, which worked out perfectly. I tried a few different ways to figure out how to make the point, and this is what I came up with. I think it actually turned out pretty good. I'm annoyed with my background because I couldn't get the wig point to really like show up because of the black and white striping in the background. But I did it, so there's that. This is the final step to this look. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and enjoyed this look. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I work really hard on my content for you guys. Love you guys so much. See you in the next one.